All right, guys, we're back again with a brand new video, and this video is going to be again on crossover design. And this particular video is something that I think anyone that's going to be doing crossover work really needs to understand and get because it's going to take your speaker design to a whole new level. Now, that is the Z offset. That's right, today we're going to be talking about Z offset, and we're going to show you exactly how to determine the Z offset for the particular speaker that you're going to be designing. So let's go ahead and talk first about what Z offset is. Now Z offset is basically the difference between when the sound leaves the tweeter versus when the sound leaves the woofer. Now, a lot of people don't even think about this, but when you put a woofer and a tweeter inside a box, what you'll notice is that of course, typically the woofer is going to be a considerably deeper in the box than say the tweeter. And even if they are the exact same size, that doesn't mean that the acoustic centers are going to be the same on the woofer and the tweeter. So what we want to do is align those up. Now you can physically line those up if you figure out what the Z offset is, or you can acoustically line that up with a crossover. And that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing we need to do is just kind of figure out how far away that tweeter is from the midwoofer. It'd be just great if we could just easily uh, measure it with a tape measure, but we can't. So you are going to need a couple pieces of measurement equipment from this. This is not me trying to sell you anything. This is just, if you want to be able to do this, this is what you need. Uh, you need something like DATS. Uh, I personally think DATS is one of the best, cheapest uh, measurement equipment that you can possibly get for $100. I mean, I, you just can't go wrong wrong with it. I, I, I love DATS. Um, but you need something to measure impedance. So if you don't want to use DATS, get something that measures your impedance. You're also going to need a measurement microphone, something like the UMIC-1 or my personal favorite, the OmniMic. And you're going to need PCD, Passive Crossover Designer, which is a free program that Jeff Bagby made. Anyone that uh, wants to thank him, go ahead and give him a huge shout out for making PCD. It's a great piece of software. You do need Microsoft Excel to be able to run that though. Now what we want to do first is get the ZMA of each one of the drivers that we're using. So uh, we're assuming that you've already built a test box for this now and you put your drivers inside your te test box. You want to hook up your DATS program and get your impedance measurement of both your woofer and your tweeter. Once you have those particular measurements, go ahead and save those ZMA files. We're going to need those in a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is get the frequency response of the drivers. If you're in-house, the best way to do this is put your measurement microphone about 16 inches away on the tweeter axis, meaning directly centered on the tweeter. Now, once we go ahead and directly center that on the tweeter and push that microphone back 16 inches, we're going to take the measurement of both the woofer and the tweeter by themselves. So those are going to be hooked up directly to the amplifier and we're going to get those measurements. Now this is typically where most people stop. This is not where we need to stop. We need to take it one step further. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook up the tweeter and woofer in parallel. So we're going to take the tweeter and I'm sorry, we're going to take the tweeter positive and the woofer positive and wire those together and hook it up to the positive of the amplifier and take the negatives of the woofer and tweeter, wire those together and hook it up to the amplifier. Now, once we do that, these are now hooked up in what we call parallel and we're going to take another measurement. Now, this measurement is going to look a lot different than the other two measurements and you're going to see some dips and some nulls in there and that's okay. That's how we're going to get the Z offset. Save that FRD file. You don't need the ZMA of that, you just need the FRD. Now we're going to open up PCD and this is really where the rest of this all comes into play. When we're in Passive Crossover Designer, we're going to go ahead and load those files that we just saved. So we want to load both the woofer and tweeter FRD and ZMA files. Now what you want to do is make sure that you have a parallel two-way selected right here and we also want to make sure that we have loaded that wiring configuration. Okay, You do not want to have any of the crossover work done yet. Make sure that is all clear. Now once we have this all loaded up, we're going to go to Import Overlay. 
and we're going to import the FRD of those two drivers playing together. Now, I did not mention this earlier, but I'm going to mention it now. When you took those measurements, I hope you didn't move the measurement microphone and or speaker because that's going to kind of make this void. So make sure you try not to move that, or if you do move it, just, just move it very minimally. Just try not to move it at all, though. Now, once we load these files and load this overlay, uh, you're going to see that there are two lines appeared, one dark line and now one light gray line, and they are not matched up. Now, our goal is to line these up. Now, the way we do that is by adjusting the offset. So the first thing that we want to do is adjust the vertical offset of the drivers. Now, that is your y-axis. That means that the tweeter typically is directly above your midwoofer, and you need to measure from the center of the mid to the center of the tweeter, take that measurement, and put that in this particular program. Now, that is in meters, so if you're in inches, you need to change that over to meters. You're also going to want to do that on the horizontal offset if your tweeter should be offset from the woofer. Mine is not, so I'm going to leave that at zero. Now, it's important to note that you can do negatives. Negative would mean it was below the woofer, so if your tweeter was below, you'd do negative. And positive would mean it's above. Now we need to offset the woofer. Now the woofer is going to be a negative offset. Now, since I've been doing this long enough, I know that's probably going to be between an inch and a half and inch and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and start there in meters and just see what we can do. Now our goal is to try to line up this gray line with this black line. And when we do that, we will then be able to know the Z offset. There you go. That's now lined up very, very well. You're going to notice the high end is off a little bit. That is probably because I must have moved the measurement microphone. But you can tell that the majority of this is very well lined up. And so we now have figured out our Z offset. Now you can use this program just like normal to figure out your crossover design. However, if you want to use a program like XSIM, you're going to want to load XSIM up, load the drivers that, and put in the FRD and ZMA files, and you're going to want to put a delay on the woofer. Now, in PCD, this was a negative number, but in XSIM, this is going to be a positive number. And now we're set to do our crossover design in XSIM. Now, the great thing about this is this should allow us to really get phase alignment, especially if you're using the Omni mic. The Omni mic is really good at when it's taking measurements to be able to gather phase at the same time. And so we should get a really good idea of whether our speakers are now going to be in phase or out of phase. All right, guys. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this. This is a really great thing to learn. If you want to learn other tips and tricks, go ahead and check out Toyd's DIY Audio. Um, we created a new website. And we have a forum on there. And another place to do that would be at Midwest Audio Fest. That's coming up uh, in July. I hope to see you guys there. I will be there. Um, but you can learn a lot of great things from some of the guys that are doing the speaker design competition not to mention you can get some really great deals there too so i hope to see you guys there at midwest audio fest and of course i hope to see you guys on the forum as well all right guys this is one two three toy and i'm out